Hello all. In today's lecture, we are going to learn about LIFO method. LIFO means last in, first out, which means that whatever inventory you have purchased in the last, that inventory you are going to sell first. So first of all, let's see what do you mean by LIFO and where the LIFO is used and what are the merits and demerits. So as I have already told you that LIFO means last in first out, whatever material you have purchased in last, you are going to sell it first. And we also know that during the inflation, there is a rise in price and every day the inflation is there. So prices of the raw material are increasing with the passage of passage of time. So we can say that as the inflation is there and whatever material we are going to purchase at the end that will cost a maximum price. That means whatever material we have purchased on the uh, previous date that will cost less and whatever material we are going to purchase on the latest date that will cost more. So uh, your LIFO method helps in corporate taxes. That means if we are using the LIFO method and inflation is there, it will help us to pay less amount of taxes. As we can say that in LIFO, it includes last purchase of material cost. And as the time passes, the cost of material increases, which means that cost will increase. If the cost of raw material is more, that means that cost of goods sold will also be more and hence the profit will decrease because we are living in this world where the competition is there and we cannot change the selling price. So if the cost of goods sold is increased which means the profit will decrease and the government charges the taxes on the profit. So if the profit will decrease obviously we have to pay less tax to the government. So if we are using the LIFO method we can say that our tax will be saved. But on the other hand, if there are less profit, which means that it will not attract more investors, which is not a good sign. And it will be considered as a drawback if we are using the LIFO method. Another drawback is that older inventory may remain in the books forever. That means whatever we have purchased first, that will remain in the books because we are not selling it. For example, if we have purchased some material on 1st January, 2nd lot on 2nd January and 3rd lot on 3rd January and we are selling the goods on 4th January. So in LIFO method, we will not be using the material that we have purchased on 1st January. We will be using the material that we have purchased on 3rd January. So similarly, if in the 4th January we are selling and on the 5th January again we make a purchase and on 6th January we are selling the goods which means that we are going to sell the goods which we have purchased on 5th January not on the goods that we have purchased on the 1st January. So it means that whatever the inventory we have purchased first that will always remains in the books of account and the LIFO method will not give the correct picture of your profit and loss account. So mostly companies uses the FIFO method in India almost all the companies are using FIFO method no, no company is using the LIFO method because IFRS that means international financial reporting standards insists to use the FIFO method. But if you talk about the different countries in US, the companies are using LIFO method because US does not believe in generally accepted accounting principles in which we in India uses or uh, even the uh, your European countries are using and your Canada is using your general accepted accounting principles. They are following the IFRS, but US is not following the IFRS. They are not using the generally accepted accounting principles. So now let's see how we are going to solve this question. So over here, the question is given. There are some purchases which are done in the month of January and February and some issues or you can say sale are there which are there in the month of January and February. The performance is same as we have discussed in the FIFO lecture. First column will be for the date column, second for particular third column will be for purchase, fourth for sales and fifth will be for balance. And in purchase, sale and balance, we are going to divide it into three parts, quantity, rate and amount. We are going to do the question in a chronological order. That means we will see the date wise. We are going to use that question by date wise. So first of all, we are going to write first date that is given to be January 3rd. So we can say January 3rd, 2021. On January 3rd, 2021, we purchase quantity is 500 kg. Rate is given to be rupees 2. So amount will be 1000. Since we have not purchased, sold anything on this date, so we will directly write the balance. So on 3rd January, we have 500 kg at the rate of 2 amount is 1000. After January 
third next date is january 18 so we are going to write january 18 january 18 2021 again we made a purchase purchase is of 350 kg rate is 2.10 so our amount will be 350 multiply by 2.10 so it's 735 so we have not sold anything on this so now let's see the balance so whenever you are writing the balance it should be in order so whatever lot you have purchased first we are going to write that first and whatever lot we have purchased afterward we are going to write that lot after the first lot so first lot is 500 kg at the rate of 2 amount is 1000 and second lot was 350 kg at the rate of 2.1 amount is 735 so this was our lot so let's so let's let's see the next date next date is january 19th on january 19th we have issue so we write issue since we have not purchased anything so we are not going to write any amount in the purchase column now issue is of 600 kg now since we are using the lifo method so we first of all we are going to see our last balance this is our last balance where there were two lots one lot was 500 kg that we purchased first and second lot was for 350 kg that we used purchased afterwards so in lifo method we are first going to sold or we are going first going to issue the lot that we have purchased afterwards so that means first of all we are going to sell 350 kg so let's sell 350 kg so 350 kg rate is 2.10 amount is 735 since we have sold 600 kg so next lot we are going to sell it from this so it will be 250 kg so we are going to sell 250 kg at the rate of 2 amount is 500 now how much balance is left this 350 kg we have already sold and from this 500 kg we have sold 250 so we are left with 250 kg at the rate of 2 amount is 500 now next date after january 19th it's january 25th so let's write january 25th 2021 on january 25th we have purchased on january 25th we purchased 600 kg at the rate of 2.20 amount will be 600 multiply by 2.20 that comes out to be 1320 we have not sold anything so we are not going to write anything now let's see the balance so first of all we are going to write the previous balance so previous balance was 250 kg at the rate of 2 amounting 500 next slot is 600 kg at the rate of 2.2 amount is 132 Zero. now after january 25th next date is january 27 so let's see january 27 2021 on january 27 we are issuing so let's write issue so nothing in purchase column in sale column we are selling 450 kg so first of all we are going to use this 600 kg to issue so first of all we are going to write 450 from this at the rate of 2.2 amount will be 450 multiply by 2.2 which comes out to be 990 now let's see the balance now since we have used this 600 so our previous balance stands as it is so first of all we are going to write the previous balance 250 at the rate of 2 amounting to 500 from this 600 we have already sold 450 so we are left with 150 kg at the rate of 2.2 amount will be 150 multiply by 2.2 so it's 330 now at the end of January 27, we are left with 250 kg and 150 kg. Now next, after January 27, next date is February 4th, 2021. On February 4th, we purchase 500 kg. Rate is 2.3. Value will be 500 multiplied by 2.3, which will be 1150. Now since we have not purchased or uh, sold anything, so we are not going to write any amount in the sale column. Now let's see the balance. We already have two lots. So first of we are going to write these two lots 250 at the rate of 2 amounting to 500 and 150 at the rate of 2.2 amounting to 330 and the latest purchase is 500 kg at the rate of 2.3 amount is 1150 now after february 4th we have february 5th so let's write february 5th 2021 on february 5th we have issue so let's write issue nothing on the purchase column in issue column we have sold 510 kg so first of all we are going to sell from this lot because this lot was the last lot that we purchased so 500 kg at the rate of 2.3 it will be 1150 and 10 units will be sold from the 
immediately preceding lot that means 10 units are sold from 150 kg so 10 units are sold at the rate of 2.2 value will be 22 and let's see the balance balance will be 250 kg is not sold so it stand as it is 250 at the rate of 2 amounting to 500 and from this 150 we are left with 140 kg at the rate of 2.2 your value will be 140 multiplied by 2.2 308 and this 500 lot is completely sold so nothing left from this lot after february 5th it's february 7 2021 on february 7th also we have issued so on february 7th we have issued 150 kg so first of all we are going to use this lot the last lot it's 140 kg at the rate of 2.2 amount will be 308 and remaining 10 units will be sold from the previous lot so 10 units at the rate of 2 amounting to 20 and now let's see how much units are left this lot is completely sold and from this lot 240 units are left at the rate of 2 amount will be 240 multiply by 2 that comes out to be 480 so our closing balance or you can say the units which are left unsold is 240 kg at the rate of 2 amounting to be 480 rupees hope you have understood the question how we are going to solve the question with the help of LIFO method for further numericals you can refer my book introduction to cost accounting thank you